Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ryan Ride Mechanic channel. How the heck are you doing today? On today's video, you, some of you may have noticed that I covered something a handful of weeks ago where I went to some amusement parks, but nobody ever heard anything about it. Um, I did a pretty good sized trip. I hit a couple parks in there over a weekend, essentially, uh, kind of like spreading about one week's worth of time. And I've always meant to do a trip report for it. And, uh, so I wanted to do that today, so let's get into this. Now get ready, here we go. Okay, so on today's video, a couple weeks back, I'm going to do this in kind of like a narrative style, even though I haven't typed anything out, I haven't written anything, I'm not good at telling stories, so this video might suck. Fair warning, like this, this might be an absolute trash video. Okay, so here we go. Uh, Really early on, someone contacted me and they said, hey, do you want to be on TV? And I was like, yeah, I want to be on TV. Who doesn't want to be on TV? Come on, isn't that just a fun thing? Like, let's go on TV. This will be fun. Um, so the guy said, all right, well, uh, I'm not sure when it's going to happen, but uh, I kind of want your input on some stuff that happened. So um, I'll be in contact with you. Sure. OK. Uh, towards the end of July, he contacts me up and says, hey, uh, we have a filming date. We're going to be doing it basically when he contacted me. He basically said, we're going to be filming it next weekend. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, where is it going to be? Because, you know, where I am, I'm, I'm out here in Omaha, Nebraska. And he says, well, let's see. He gets back to me and he says, all right, it's going to be in the town of Brighton, Colorado. And I'm like, hmm, okay. Brighton, Colorado. And I Googled that and I, I mapped it out there and said, OK, so I figured this is going to be a road trip. It's going to be outside of my normal area. It's going to take a while to get there. For those of you who aren't familiar with the geographics of the United States of America, maybe from overseas, let me fill you in a little bit. Uh, the U.S. is big. It's really big. When I talk with people from other countries, most people just can't fathom how big the U.S. actually is. So here's where I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a little uh, visual exercise here. Basically, Colorado is basically just one state behind me. It's behind me and down south just to the next state. That's it. Realistically, the way Nebraska is set up. The ass right into Nebraska sits right on the top of the Colorado. Oh yeah, by the way, fair warning in this video, I might be swearing a little bit more than usual just because I let some topics get away from me in this narrative style. But anyways, I'm going to continue on with it. So... When you map it out, it's like a seven hour car drive to go to the next state. And when you zoom out and on, on the entire U.S., you'll find out that this is only just a small fraction of the U.S. Yeah, I kind of mapped it out. I was like, you know what? If you drive from one end of the U.S. to the other, west to east, east to west, whichever way you want to put it, it takes like 50 hours to drive across. And then uh, north to south, it takes like another 15 hours to drive across that way. So to put that into perspective, I've talked with people from other countries that say, man, you could drive our, across our whole country in five hours. And I'm sure I'll get plenty of people from this video be like, oh, yeah, you could drive across ours in like two and a half hours. It's like, yeah, I used to live in California, north to south. You can drive across California. You could be driving for 14 hours straight and still be inside of the state of California. That's how big that is. Kind of impressive when you step back and think about it. They called me up and they said, yeah, let, let's go to uh, Brighton, Colorado, and we're going to set you up with a guy to do an interview there who's going to ask you a bunch of questions. And I was like, okay, and the guy's going to be there? It's like, no, the guy's going to be online, but we're going to hire an independent camera crew to show up and actually do the filming for you. So you'll just be there with the independent camera crew, and the guy will be online asking you questions. So it's like, okay, this sounds doable. So I'm like, what time do I need to be there? It's like, oh, you need to be there at 11 o'clock in the morning. It's like, all right, 11 o'clock minus seven hours gives them time for traffic. And it's like, all right, I need to leave at like 3 a.m. in the morning. So I get up. 3 a.m. in the morning and I start heading out and there is nothing along the road to do. I mean, there's nothing to look at. It's pitch black. There's no sights moving by. This is Nebraska. This is a what we call a pass through state. You know, you just drive through it. There's nothing really to see along the line. So but I don't want to speed speed limit 75 miles per hour. 
I really don't want to speed at all because it's 3 a.m. Cops don't have much to do at 3 a.m. You know, their line of who they're going to pull over at 3 a.m. gets really fine. And knowing my luck, as soon as I creep over 77, 78 miles per hour, my luck, I'd see those red and blue lights turn on behind me. It's like, oh, crap, that is the last thing I need because it's like, ah, that pushes my anxiety over the edge. I might get pulled over for this. Oh, man, I don't want to do that. So I'm just driving along, just trying to like focus. And it's like, so what can I do to help myself focus and pass the time a little bit more? Let's have a monster energy drink. You know, I like those things. I crack open a monster energy drink. I'm drinking that thing on the way down. Now my brain's sitting there trying to go out, outrun the car. It's like, yeah, we can go faster than this. It's like, yeah, yeah, we go faster. It's like, yeah, no, no, I can't. But, and then I've got an internal fight. I can go faster. No, I can't go faster. It's like, all right, all right. So you got focus focus on what's going by what's going on so time passes and we're just driving forever got to pull over one time to get gas pull over for gas and i finally make it to brighton colorado and i get there and it's just like okay i show up I meet the guy in there and the first thing I do is I walk into this place and say, how am I supposed to figure this out? It's like, well, they said, just we've reserved a conference room where the filming is going to take place. So just go ahead and head in, in there and tell them that you're here for the film. And I'm like, OK, this is going to look really good. I'm traveling with my wife because I asked the wife and kids, hey, who wants to go along with me to Colorado? And my son said no. My daughter was working and my wife said, I'll go along with you. So I'm like, OK, cool. But flash forward, thinking about this as I go into this hotel with my wife and saying, I'm here for the video and I'm meeting up just a camera guy and now a guy and a girl and a camera guy are going in there. It's like, oh, it kind of looks like I'm making a low budget porn at this point in time. And you say, yeah, I'm here for the film shoot. And they go, oh, yeah, OK, it's down this hall over here. Like, which room is it? They're at this one. It's like, OK, so. I go down there not knowing what's going on. I kind of just crack the door open, open it up. They're already filming another guy's interview in there as well because they've lined up several people at this location. So it's like, oh, I didn't even think there would be somebody else in this interview. But OK, so I'm waiting, open the door and everyone turns around and looks at me as they turn back. And I'm just like, oh, whoops, that's the uh, sorry. Didn't realize I was, inter I was interrupting the guy before me gets done. And then they say, okay, come on in. And they get me all hooked up for sound and they get the lighting check and all that stuff done. And uh, so they go through, we do the interview. The guy asks me a bunch of questions. I answer them. Uh, and he says, yeah, we'll, we'll use what we can off of this. And he gives me some information. Flash all the way forward to just recently, I finally got a thumbnail from the video. And I'll be putting that in this one so you can see what it looks like. It will be on in the UK. That's the key part. It's going to be on in the UK. So all of those in the US, you won't really be able to see it unless you somehow get a uh, channel from the UK. It's going to be on Channel 5, Sunday, September 1st at 6.05 p.m. I happen to make an appearance on there. So if you guys want to go see that and you're in the UK or you have a VPN that just tells them you're in the UK... Uh, it's on channel five at 6.05 p.m. It's called When Theme Parks Go Horribly Wrong. Now, I know that that title had me kind of worried when they were asking me about it. I was like, oh, I don't want to just get in there and and uh, be asked about a bunch of crazy thing that happened. You know, it's like you never know which way these videos are going to turn. But when they sent me all the clips that they were going to be using during the course of this video, I was actually feeling really comfortable about it. I was like, oh, this this will actually be fun. Like this, this has a lot of potential to be fun. I did some research on this stuff and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, this, this looks like this will be great. So I haven't seen anything about it. They interviewed me and then that was it. And it's like, okay. So the next leg of the trip was to check in to a hotel. Now my wife had made hotel reservations. She likes staying at nice hotels. Honestly, I can't blame her. I do like staying at nice hotels as well. I always used to growing up, I was used to staying at like a motel, like a motel eight or something like that, just down dirty and cheap because I just needed a place to stay for the night. But for this trip, we're like, you know, we haven't been to Colorado before. 
And people are like, wait a minute, it's it's the state right next to you. You've never been there. Did you hear the part I just talked about earlier where there's a seven-hour car drive over there? No, I haven't been to Colorado before. The closest I've come to Colorado is looking at the side of a Coors Light can waiting for the mountains to turn blue, knowing that the beer is cold enough to drink. So my wife makes reservations at this hotel called the Hotel Clio, and she says it's a nice place it's a nice hotel and i'm worried about the cost because they send me a thing like how do you want to check into the hotel i'm like what do you mean how do i want to check into a hotel this is this is normal so i click on the link for this email it takes me there and it says how will you be arriving to the hotel i've never been asked this question before and i've stayed at a lot of hotels and it's just like how am I going to be arriving? And I knew I was kind of in a little bit of trouble when the first response was says, how are you going to be arriving at this hotel? And the first option was private jet, followed up by private helicopter. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, how much is this hotel we're staying at? This has to be crazy. So I don't know. She booked it. I'm on the way there. It's like, okay, let's just go. Let's head down there and let's see what's going on. Um, so we get there and it's a little, it's a small hotel, downtown Denver, Colorado. It's a really nice area. It's nice to a nice little shopping district. Uh, so the first thing is, is that there's no parking in the area. So it's like, okay, what do we need to do for parking? And they say, well, you can go down to this parking uh, structure down there and you got to drive down a couple blocks and over and park your own car and you'll be paying like 30 or 40 bucks a night to park your car. I said, okay, well, we're only here for one night, so I could probably, it, like, 40 bucks isn't too bad, but uh, what else is there? And my wife says, oh, it, everyone else there just valet parks the car. It's like, well, how much does a valet cost? And it's like, we get there, and it's like, okay, the valet's $59. And it's like, all right, well, I guess for the convenience, it'll we'll just pay the extra 20 bucks, and then it doesn't matter how many times I want to go to and from the hotel, it's like, okay, look, the the they bring the car right to you. There's nothing I have to worry about. So it's like, okay, so we go in to complete the check-in process. Uh, and I wanted to let them know that I did not show up by a private jet or a private helicopter to this establishment. I happened to drive my own car. Now I feel like I'm the absolute trash of society being there as people are looking there, standing there with their drink going like, Oh, oh, did that person just drive their own car here? Oh my gosh. Oh, some people are so poor. So I go up to the front counter and we start checking in. It's like, all right, let's set up. And then this is the point in the hotel registration where they normally give you the little key card that looks like a plastic credit card, basically to swipe or tap or do something to there. They give me a wood key. This is a wood token. It looks like a token. It looks like something you would almost put down underneath a shot glass at a bar. They're like, that's your room key. It's like, okay, first time I've ever seen that. This is an interesting hotel. Let's go up to the room. Got up to the room. It was really nice. It had a really nice view of uh, what was outside of the hotel room. Because it's been a couple of months. You know, it's been like a, not a couple of months, I'm sorry. It's been almost a month since this happened. So my memory is kind of sketchy on some of the stuff. The scenic windows overlook to construction and a crane outside. That's right. I was looking at the crane out there. I was like, well, at least I got something to do in the middle of the night if I wake up. I could watch people moving stuff around with a crane, which is actually cool to watch sometimes. But anyways, uh, we go up there and I'm like, all right, this is cool. And uh, we go in there. The room's really nice. It's really nice and clean. The, the bathroom's nice and clean. I kind of do judge hotels by how clean the bathroom is. The bathroom's nice and clean. And then uh, on our way to the hotel room, my wife stops at the, the little station. You know how sometimes you go to a hotel and they've got a little room there for like ice and things like that? Well, this one had two taps and a basket of apples sitting there. And so what? Yeah, so... Normally you go into those areas and a lot of places they'll have a little vending machine sitting inside there and a little ice machine sitting inside there. Well, they don't have this at this place. They had two taps and a basket of apples sitting there. Three apples to be exact, which was interesting. One tap had just regular but filtered water on tap. So if you need water, you go there and you could fill up a jug or anything you wanted with just nice filtered water. The tap right next to it actually had sparkling filtered water on it. And I'm like, this place has sparkling filtered water on tap? 
I mean, like, I've, I've never even seen this anywhere, let alone in the middle of a hotel. And this is on each floor. They got this on each floor. So I'm like, what's in this bin underneath? And I open up these trays underneath, and there's bags of ice inside of there. And I'm like, they didn't even put an ice machine up there. They just put bags of ice up there, which is a really cool concept because you get to stop by and pick one up and take it back to your room, except for that by the time you get that through there and the machine cycled through its hot and cold cycles a bunch of times, you have now brought up a brick of ice and you have to do that something in the bathroom that looks like you're trying to murder somebody as you're trying to break the ice back apart so you can actually use it in your cups for the rest of the night. This is honestly uh, in the afternoon. We had gone to an In-N-Out Burger. Having lived in California, we were no longer around In-N-Out Burgers anymore. So it's like, hey, Colorado has an In-N-Out Burger. So let's go to In-N-Out Burger. Wasn't very happy with the uh, fries. Apparently, it's something about, uh, you know, it's something about the high altitude because it is a mile high. You know, it's a uh, Colorado's the mile high city. Uh, so that's its elevation from sea levels, 5,280 feet. So mile high city so we went to in and out burger before we got to the hotel and we were partaking in that um i'm not a big in and out fan so it didn't really phase me at all so when we're done at the hotel it goes what do we want to do next well let's see we started looking around at things to do there was an amusement park that looked pretty cool that was up in the hills a little bit further and by a little bit further i mean it looked really close on the map but when you actually mapped it to get out there it was another three hour drive and i was like i don't know if we want to drive three hours and the locals said well good luck because if there's an accident or anything on that road you'll be stuck out there so my wife said there is a amusement park near nearby uh and i'm like what is that so I hadn't known this, but it turns out it was Elitch Gardens. And I was like, hey, I've heard of that before. I think that used to be a Six Flags park, and then they had to let go of it during the bankruptcy. Uh, but then I'm not sure who owns it now, but it's like Elitch Gardens. I'm like, is there any there that, anything there that we would want to do? I'm not about going to all the amusement parks. I know there's plenty of people out there that have to check the box and they have to go ride on every single thing at the park, but... We will look at a park ahead of time and see if there's anything that we realistically want to go do on that. And she's like, there's this skateboard ride there that I want to go on. So I looked at it and I was like, okay, well, let's see what we could do. So we headed out to Elish Gardens and it turns out it was actually just like 10 minutes from the hotel. It was a very quick drive from the hotel. And so we went to Elish Gardens. And pulling up, it looked like a nice place. Uh, we went there. We paid 30 bucks for parking, which was a little much, but it kind of is what it is these days with amusement parks. So I headed in, and uh, it, it had a very nice facade coming into it. Uh, opened up right into a very scenic carousel. And the first thing I noticed, looking at the carousel and the nice painting, and it had this very like boardwalk-feeling thing to it, is the... And I looked around and I said, there was a lot of bees around here. I just happened to notice there was just like freaking bees on everything. I'm like, why is there so many bees on this thing? So everything we did, we walked around. It's of course, every trash can was swarming with bees, swarming with wasps. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? So we walked around and we said, well, let's, we, we kind of just walked through the park. The skate ride that she wanted to go on was in the back of the park. So we kind of, we got a whole tour of the park. Um, Mind Eraser. It's funny how the first aid station is right next to the Mind Eraser. There was a lot of things that we saw around that was like, oh look, there's one of these rides, there's one of those rides. There was an old aero shuttle coaster that unfortunately wasn't working that day because if that was working i would have wanted to go on that one i was like yeah let's go on that but unfortunately it wasn't working for that day so it looked like it had just gotten uh, stopped up there probably one of the launch motors was burnt out on the thing anyways so we're walking around taking in the sights and sounds of the parks looking at people buying dipping dots and of course my wife wanted some dipping dots so we went ahead and got some dipping dots uh then we got in line for the scape ride and that was really interesting because in that line there was two things that happened in that line one there was a lot of bees in that line and then two 
I spotted Waldo in the amusement park. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You know, there's a book series out there with Waldo. Where's Waldo? An impossible thing of uh, little images on a book. And then you eventually look down and you're like, oh, there he is. And it's a little guy in there. It's like a little Waldo character, but he blends in with everything. So you spend 10, 15, 20 minutes looking at a page trying to find Waldo. Well, I'm standing in line noticing how many bees are flying all out of the woodworks everywhere for everything. And then I look over and this lady in black sweats top and bottom is standing there in, I kid you not, stiletto high heels. And I'm like, there it is, the mythical creature. I don't think I've ever seen high heels in the wild in an amusement park outside of like some sort of, uh, you know, special event, like a red carpet event, like a brand new ride opening or something like that, where you might have celebrities or something coming in, just a normal operating day at the park. And here's a lady standing there in stiletto heels. And I'm just like, you are the reason insurance is so high in these parks. I wanted to take a picture, but I thought that might be kind of creepy. You know, the guy standing there and just pulls out the phone and tries to like, you know, do the old like, Take a snapshot of a lady's feet in public. Like, I think that kind of gives off the wrong vibe. And I surely don't want to show up on the internet in that particular fashion right now. Um, so I didn't do that. But I'm just like, I'm like bumping my wife. I'm like, hey, hey, look, look right, right there. <laughs> do you see it? I see it. Wow, that's crazy. So we got up a little bit close to the ride and I'm watching this ride work and I'm like, oh, I notice it's got little junction box on it that say IDS. And I'm like, oh, the impulse coaster I worked on had an IDS drive system on it. I'm like, okay. And I'm looking up at the junction boxes underneath and I notice bird's nests sitting inside there. And I'm like, how often is this looked at if we got birds nesting in there? We got multiple birds nests, in fact. We got all sorts of stuff in there. I'm like, is, is anybody actually looking at this stuff? Because I mean, like typically you try to like knock down bird's nests when they start building. And this looks like it had been there for a while. But I was like, oh, okay. So we get up, we're on the platform, we're ready to go, we're next in line. And the ride comes to home and the ride doesn't home properly. So... The whole time we're waiting up there, my wife had already taken my phone so she could put it in her purse so it doesn't come out of my stuff. We put it on the other side of the platform and I watched them do this whole process where they slid the gondola or the, the train coach, whatever you want to call it. They slid it forward and backwards a little bit so the homing wheels could actually come up and turn the two seat pods that you sit in so they homed properly. And then we walked through well, that whole process and then I sat there and went, I should have filmed that. <laughs> I am not great at doing stuff like that. I am just not in the mindset of it. So I was like, man, I should have filmed that. Oh man, that's crazy. But I was wondering, I was watching this, I'm like, what causes those seats to spin as that ride is moving? So I'm looking at it, it's like, okay, it's it's on the center line of the track. It's being driven by, they look like uh, staters like linear synchronous staters on there. I'm not sure if they are or not, but they, they gave off that look and there wasn't a screech coming from them. So kind of the look and the sound put together said that they're induction or uh, synchronous staters. Uh, so what they were is that actually, I, I was able to figure it out real quick standing there that the two seat pods that you sit on those uh, skater rides, which I think are Intamin, I think Intamin built those rides. Um, what they are is that the seat pod itself is off-centered. It's not actually, it's not a round set of seats on a round ring. The two rings like that, they're actually offset with each other. They're further away from one side. So right when the ride dispatches, the drive motors touch the inside and they start spinning the seats. And then they get the speed seat spinning and then the drive motors pull away and then the coach starts to swing. And then just as gravity and the load of the weight comes down, it goes up and down throughout the ride, it causes them to spin a little bit more or a little bit less, depending on how it sits and which way it's going. So they're not actually driven during the cycle at all, because that was one of my questions. Like, is something driving it? No, they're just free spinning because 
it's a centric circle sitting off to the side. So after we got done with that, we got done with the birds and the bees out there and we came back and she said, is there anything you really want to ride before we leave? And I'm like, these are mainly clone rides in this park. I've pretty much been on almost all of them. There was a wooden coaster towards the back. I had no ambition to go on. I didn't want to subject myself to a wooden roller coaster on that particular day. You got to remember also I've been up since 3 a.m. driving around. Uh, so we went over, she says, do you want to go on the mind eraser? I'm like, SLC, I've done that so many times. No, thank you. I will pass this particular time. But one thing there was over there was a spider and that looked like fun. It was one of the original spiders. It doesn't, doesn't have the telescoping end that comes out of the top to lift and lower the arms. It's just got, I mean, it's the old, it's cable brake driven in the center to load and unload the uh, arms as the thing comes around. So I was like, I would like to go on the spider. So let's get, we went in line, we got in line and it wasn't that long. It was just, you know, maybe uh, 30 feet long. And uh, now in line for the skate ride, I realized that, you know, the operators move pretty slow on this ride. There's a lot of room for improvement out there. And I don't like just slandering parks for things like that. So I was just like, hey, you know, operators, crew, you know, the ride could be a particular way. So I'm like, I didn't want to just be like, ah, oh, they suck. I can't do anything like that. So we got in line for the spider and uh, we were standing there for like five minutes. And then I realized I was like, this takes forever. Why is this moving so slow? Holy crap. This is incredibly like painfully slow. And we were, I was watching them. It's like they bring one of the arms with two pods of people down at the same time. And they load and unload one pod at a time. It's like you wouldn't just walk over there and be like click and then turn like two feet and click open up the other one. But so it, it absolutely took forever. We were in line for it and it started drizzling while we were there that kind of marked the end of the day because it started raining uh we, we it was drizzling so we get on there and my wife is scared of the ride uh because in her mind she's like it feels like the ride is gonna fall over and then uh, so i'm sitting there i'm like it's not gonna fall over she says it feels like the arm's just gonna break off i'm like my arm's not gonna break off so as we start going around and spinning, and she doesn't like when the arm gets up high when you're tilted way back, when it actually feels like you're in a recliner because you're way back in the seat like that. And it's just like, oh, this feels comfortable to me. She's like death grip on like, oh my gosh, we're, the arm's going to break off. I'm like, the arm's not going to break off. Don't worry about it. So we finally, and, and we finally get around back to the unload position, get off. So we head out for the evening. It's starting to rain at that point in time. So we're just like, we're out of here. We're going to go. So we walked around the mall that was close to our hotel for a little bit. And then we went to, of all places, a place that we haven't been in a very long time, California Pizza Kitchen, which they had some good stuff there. Uh, afterwards, we're like, oh, we should go get a pretzel. They had some Wetzel's pretzels there. I don't know if anyone's ever had Wetzel's pretzels. They're mainly a West Coast uh, chain but they are quite good. I love them way more than Auntie Anne's pretzels for uh, people here in the U.S. People outside of the U.S. probably like, what the heck are you talking about? It's just pretzels, breaded pretzels. That's all it is. So she's like, oh, we should save some room for a pretzel afterwards. That way we can have dinner and then go into the mall and get a pretzel at the uh, Wetzel's Pretzels. And I'm like, oh, that sounds really good. So I saved some. I didn't finish all my food because I want to save room for that pretzel. And we got done. And we were walking around the mall. We were looking at all sorts of stuff. We found a whole bunch of her favorite stores that she likes. So we're walking through all these stores, walking through all these stores. I'm like, oh, let's go get a pretzel now. And she's like, yeah, uh, let, let's, uh, let's wait. And I'm like, okay. So we walked around some more stores and then we found the really fancy stores. You know, the ones that are like all gold lettering to get. To, to get. And I'm just like, it's like all gold lettering on the front. And it's just like, oh my gosh. This, this is going to make a credit card balance go up. It's like we should not be near these, store, these stores at all. So we get in and out of those stores. Uh, luckily, uh, I didn't have to buy anything, so that was great. And then we continue to walk around the mall, and she's like, oh, let's go. And I'm sitting here going, what the hell? There's no pretzel. We didn't get a pretzel after that. I purposely didn't finish all the food, so I get a pretzel. And there was no pretzel after that. 
oh man. So I was kind of pissed. So we walked around downtown for a little bit. Uh, we did find an ice cream place, so at least we got to finish the dessert. We got ice cream, and that was pretty good. So we got back to the hotel uh, after our ice cream, and it's like, okay, let's uh, get ready to turn in for the night. It's been a pretty long day. So we went ahead and went over there. I went down to the uh, little storeroom over there I was talking about, and I picked up a block of ice and brought it back and then had to murder the ice in the bathtub to actually break it apart and uh, use some on the water. The fancy water is kind of lost on me because most of the time I just opt to go for ice water from just the sink in the room. But, you know, what the room did in the bathroom, it had some really cool things. It had uh, these nice wheels. It had nice glass shower doors that slid back and forth and it had some really nice wheels on there i was like wow i'm over there like i'm taking pictures of the shower wheel assembly on there and i was like oh these look really cool and nice so that marked the end of that night and of course the idea for this youtube video came to me at 2 a.m so i had to get up and start making notes in my phone uh, about what this YouTube video is going to be about because I decided to do this YouTube video in a storytelling style like this where I was just like okay this is what we're going to do and just lay it out and go through it point by point and kind of elaborate on a lot of points that I don't normally ever talk about um, just kind of a one-off thing I thought it'd be fun but I had to get up and write all that down otherwise it will it just keeps me up all night long if I don't actually get that thought out of my head went back to sleep after that after that, uh, first thing in the morning, we woke up and went downstairs to the nice little restaurant that was down there. Had some nice uh, breakfast pancakes. They were really good, but for some reason they tasted fruity. It tasted like they were cooking fruit in the same pan. I don't know why, but they had fruity pancakes. After breakfast, we had to make a quick pit stop by the bathroom because uh, back upstairs before we left because obviously you know coffee makes food go out fast so i had to stop in there for the bathroom but it wasn't until that time that i noticed that right next to the toilet in the bathroom there was actually a phone holder above the toilet paper roll like there was a toilet paper roll on the side and then there was a flat little level shelf just big enough for a cell phone to sit on right above that and i was like that is a really good idea that way people can go in there and look at their cell phone and do everything else that they want to do and their legs fall asleep and they get up and then slip fall hit their head get passed out unconscious on the floor great idea i really like it i think more places should have a cell phone holder in there so we said let's get out of here uh, we left and then we went around and one of the things uh, we have kind of like a little tradition going when we go new places is we go find a place to take a picture to show that we've been there and then uh, we also go find an itch sugar if they have one and take a picture in front of the itch sugar we have a whole photo album full of us in front of itch sugar photos <laughs> with the kids and everybody so it's like oh let's find an itch sugar and let's go take a photo in front of something this will be funny uh, looking around at the itch sugar locations they had one location listed in miami florida florida and but the way they had it listed it said miami florida florida that caused me to win i'm like is there an actual city in florida called miami florida florida like is the actual name of the city miami florida is there a miami and miami florida like, these are the weird things I think about when I see some of this stuff. <laughs> okay, so we're on our way out of town now. This is the point where I have a buddy that I haven't seen since high school, and I wanted to meet up with him, and uh, we were going to go meet up where he lives. So we would start driving further south from where we were, and the whole time we were looking over, the first day we came in, the... It was kind of like a hazy day, and we couldn't really see that far off in the distance, but we were looking for the Rocky Mountains. We hadn't seen the Rocky Mountains yet. Once we got to a certain point, we were able to say, like, hey, look, the Rocky Mountains actually look like they're supposed to. Now they look more like the side of a Coors Light can, which is pretty much what I was expecting at that point in time, which there was a Coors Light, uh, Coors Brewery up there, of course, the home of that particular company, we looked into doing a quick tour up there say, oh, can we get into a tour? But that was, of course, booked out like two months in advance. It was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so we said, well, 
what's the next thing to do? It's like, well, we were going to go meet my friend. So we were, let's, we stopped at a store to pick up some stuff for the drive back home, just some, uh, some drinks and some ice and stuff. And then we found a huge liquor store. Why did we find a huge liquor store? Because we're from Nebraska. That's what we do. We find big liquor stores in Nebraska. They're quite interesting. If you never walk through a huge liquor store, they're really fun to walk through. Like just all the different things that people have in there. Quite amazing. So we went to the huge liquor store, walked through that for a while. We've seen all the sights there was to see inside of there. And uh, then I'm driving around through the parking lot and I'm driving recklessly, of course, because I don't stop in parking lots because parking lots tend to over put stop signs because they're a little private place. So it's like, oh, you know, stop and wait for pedestrians to cross. It's like, OK, well, I treat that like if there are pedestrians there, I stop. If there's no pedestrians there, I don't stop. So uh, a lot of times, like in parking lots, you'll find me as like 30 stop signs in a row, you know, 30 stop signs every 10 feet. And it's like, I just drive through all of them because no one's there. But if someone stops in and starts walking out in front of me, I'll stop. That's fine. But otherwise, right through it until I come the ones that are actually in public roads where I kind of have to stop. Otherwise, I'll get a ticket. I'll stop there. So the next thing we did was we went to Ikea. We have no Ikeas really near us in uh, Nebraska. So we stopped at Ikea and we got some workout mirrors. Of course, we drive to Colorado 500 miles away to go to Ikea and buy workout mirrors. So we meet up with my friend. We have a nice lunch with him. We catch up for a while because we haven't seen each other since probably 2006 or maybe 2007, somewhere right around there. And then we start the long drive home and it is a very long drive home and it is a slow drive home because we're just out there with traffic, pasting semi trucks and other things like that. So we make it all the way home that evening, take a nice nap, get in bed. Then the next morning I wake up. This starts the second leg of the journey, which is my kids wanted to go to Adventureland, which Adventureland is about three hours away from us, two and a half, three hours, somewhere right around there for us in Iowa, which is just the next state over. So driving halfway through Iowa takes about two and a half hours to do. So we drove, we got up first thing in the morning and I had to wake up a little bit earlier because I had already promised the Coaster Climax channel a interview with them. So I got up early in the morning, turned on the cameras, got everything all set up, did an interview with Coaster Climax and then hit turn the camera off and then got in the car and started driving to Iowa. Now the actual trip from Nebraska to Iowa, I actually live right on the east edge. So the trip from Nebraska, to Iowa only takes 30 minutes, but then the trip from the edge of Nebraska to Altoona, Iowa takes another two hours and 15 minutes from there. And we've made this trip to Adventureland several times before We've gone over there. This is the first time I've brought my daughter along. Normally it's just been my son and I that have gone along this way, but I brought my daughter along this time because she wanted to go. Originally, it was just their trip. Her and my son were going to go by themselves, which I was perfectly fine with. But I found out that an engineer that I used to work with had actually just moved out that area and started working out there. So I was like, He's out there. I want to go see him. I want to go say hi. So I embarked on the trip with them, basically just to go say hi to the engineer that I used to know there. It's, I mean, in the area, might as well, because the guy, uh, I hadn't seen him in a bunch of years. I started heading out there. We do our same classic jokes as we go along. I like to sit there in the back seat uh, since my daughter was driving, and I'm like... Are we there yet? I have to pee. I'm hungry. I'm bored. I do all the stuff on a classic road trip, right? Everything that kids do to annoy you, do it back to her as much as possible. Along the way, we pass a, uh, a town called Adair, and it's right on the uh, water tower as you pass by. So as you pass by, you can look at them like, hey, look, it's Adair. So I always make the a statement like, oh, looks like they're faulted out and it needs to add air or maybe they're low on air pressure someone could add air another thing that i've noticed that when i don't drive i'm able to look around more and see other people doing things in cars and i thought 
I, I find some people doing some really interesting stuff in cars. Like I just, one guy pulled up alongside of us and he's sitting there with his cell phone. He's driving. He's sitting there with his cell phone like this, talking on his cell phone while he's driving. Now, granted, in the state we're in, it's not illegal to do this. Some states it is illegal, but it's not illegal here. So some people might say, what's the problem? Well, the problem was it was a brand new car, like less than a year old. And I know for a fact that car he was in has Bluetooth capabilities where you just link your phone to the car and you could talk through it and you don't have to hold the phone right next to you to do that. I don't understand why people do that. Why do you buy a car with Bluetooth in it and then not use it? I, is that a thing? Did I miss something somewhere? Because I see people doing that all the time. I don't know why that is. Anyway, so we get there. Find right the parking. There. Nope. Right Park there. there. Right Go there. over to the right. There. Right there. Pull in. Pull it. Pull it right no. there. Stop. Don't no, hit the don't hit the car. Don't hit the car. Stop. <laughs> we get into the park. My son and I are excited because since we've been going to this park, the underground, the infamous underground ride has not been open. And then it is now open, which is amazing. So we go, let's, we're, we're going to go, let's go get some of these rides done. So we went in and we rode on, uh, we rode on one of the break dances on the way in there. And then we, we said, you know what, let's just go to the underground. And we went there and the line said it was like 35 minutes long. And we're like, well, let's go see if we could do something else. So we went around and we walked around the monster and some other things there. And we came back and it was still 35 minutes. And I call bullshit on that as soon as I saw that. Because I had watched this one guy get in line when we were there the first time. We came back like 15 minutes later and that guy had only moved like 10 feet. And I'm like, that is not a 35 minute line. And I was right, too. So we go ahead and get in line for the underground. And this proves out to be kind of a traumatic experience. I mean, this is this is crazy. So we got there. First of all, it was one of the hottest weekends possible that we got there. So we're sitting there in line just fully melting completely. Like, we're sweating. This is like, oh, my gosh. It's not that late in the day, but where it's just hot. You know, everything is hot. And I don't know. It's a public service announcement because I don't know who needs to hear this. But wash your ass. Like, I don't know who's out there. Wash your ass. Jeez, because there's people in line that you could smell from 15 feet away. Not like it's a hot, sweaty day. You know, people have been working up a sweat. This is this is like weeks of odor that have built up off of some of these people. Like, public service announcement. Wash your ass, please. Because the rest of us have to smell. So we're waiting in line. And I notice there's a lot of TV screens hanging around, but they're off. And I don't know why they're off. But I'm just like, okay they must do something on their advertising or something like that. So moving in line, there's no air moving. They've got one fan trying to go, but this line is built into like a little corner of the side of the building. The underground's an enclosed ride. So it's like in the side of this building and there's absolutely no air moving there. So I'm sitting there dying of heat, like no air moving. Someone needs to wash their ass. Like all these smells are coming in. Nothing great out of this. We stood there in line for an hour and 15 minutes. The line after the thing out front said 35 minutes. Of course, I knew that was wrong. We stood in line for an hour of 15 and we're just sweating like crazy out there. It's just like sweat dripping off of everything. Like looks like we just got off a water ride, but we didn't. So as we're going up closer towards the front, we start seeing that because we get along the wall there and you know how people take a pin or something and they start scratching into a wall stuff. They're like, oh yeah, look, uh, you know, you know, Tim and Becky were here, you know, Tim plus Becky and the little heart around there. And as I was wondering, like, are these people still together? And my kids were like, same thing. They're like, you think these people are still together? I'm like, yeah, probably not. No, if you're writing it on this, if you're scribing it on the side of an amusement park ride, no, it's probably not together. In fact, probably, probably died absolutely horrible death caught up in a corn combine or something like that and just completely mutilated and spread across crops absolutely horrible never write your name on something never scribe your name in the side of an amusement park ride people will find you that way i believe that's like an instant breakup thing so i'm waiting in line and we're getting close to the front which is great because the line said it was 30 minute wait and we all know that it wasn't a 30 minute wait at all uh, in fact, they were off by a factor of 250% so far because we're at passing an hour and 15 minutes here. And so we finally got up to the front. 
there's one of those TVs hanging up there. Remember I said there was a bunch of TVs, but they were all off. And there's finally one that was on. And this one was on and I didn't understand it because I, I didn't get this at all. It was a picture of a horse with riding gear on, I guess. But I didn't understand it because it wasn't like normal riding gear. It was like black polished riding gear, like something you would find at some sort of like a, a fetish parade or something like that. Have you ever seen that? Seen those fetish horses out there? People dressed up like horses. It was like something that they would wear. It looked really odd. And then for some reason, there was a picture of a guy's hand with a mouse, not a live mouse, a what mouse in the corner of the picture. So, and there was no nothing else on there. There was no like, hey, uh, we're selling, you know, digital mouses. There's a, uh, this is an advertisement for uh, editing images or anything. It had no context as to why we had fetish gear on a horse with a mouse in the corner. So that just added some of the mystery to this ride. I was just sitting there like, what the fuck? I, I completely didn't understand it. So the underground, we ended up waiting an hour and a half total line. So the underground ended up being an hour and a half total line. That was the total line from the time we got in to the time we got onto the ride. And then luckily, we went into their little pre-show building. We were all the way at the back of the train. And I didn't know what to expect, but I knew something was going to happen. So I pulled my phone out and started recording the uh, animatronic on there. Well, howdy there. Welcome to the underground here in Adventureland. You know, old coal mines zigzag underground throughout the state. Fact is, Adventureland was built right over the top of one of the most notorious caverns to ever be dug out under Iowa soil. Now, one time, this here underground was the hideout for some of the most wanted outlaws and bank robbers ever to roam the territory. That is, until Sheriff Sam got plumb fed up with it. You see, the story goes that when a large shipment of gold was robbed by Bad Bob and his gang, Sheriff Sam and his posse were just awaiting for him. And when those scoundrels headed to the underground, Sheriff Sam proceeded to dynamite every entrance and exit known into the mine he could find. And that was the end of the underground and the end of the bad and bad If I have to watch it, then you have to watch it. <laughs> so we ended up going on the ride and the ride was actually a pretty fun little cool ride. I could see why it's got such a following to it. Uh, it was it was really interesting. And there was like a six foot skull in the middle of it, which I was not expecting at all. It was bad, but good. It was that crazy like. This is stupid, but. I would write it again, stupid. Like, <laughs> this is a reminder, food and drinks are that was, uh, that was really interesting, life. but it was also cool at the same time. I liked it. <laughs> There's this place close to us that opens up soon. It's called Vala's Pumpkin Patch, and it has a lot of stuff in there just like that. You're like, this is completely dumb, but I kind of want to do it again. Uh, so it's a lot of those little cult favorite things like that. So, what's the first thing we do after the ride? We are going to go to. McDonald's I actually went across the street to McDonald's, uh, which was great because uh, that was nice little air conditioned car ride across the street. We got over there and there was nobody there. The place was completely empty. Uh, 
and the, so we ordered the food and we're like sat down with our little number there and we're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and I'm like there is no one fucking here how are we waiting so long for this food like did they have to defrost something what the hell is going on you know did Tom have to come in on his day off and tell him how to make it were we waiting for someone to get there I don't know what it was but I went through the whole process of ordering everything for here and then which is you know to eat in the restaurant and then finally when I went up there I'm like oh where's this food at they were just like oh and they turn around and go in the back and come back and it's like here it is and they hand me a to-go bag and I'm like it was for here and they put a to-go bag on a tray and I'm really uh, <laughs> And then they're like, there you go. And I'm like, well, we had three drinks with this. And they're like, oh, here. And they give me the drinks back at that time. I'm like, McDonald's fail, 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 fail. You failed at like every friggin' thing in there. I was like, okay. So that was another long period of time for that food. So we got done with that and we headed back to the park. And then the first ride we decided to go on after that was the monster because might as well. And the lines in the park, aside from the friggin' underground, the lines in the park were actually pretty slow that day. They're, they were pretty low that day. So we actually started getting on rides one after another after that. So we, we went to monster and we're in line for the ride. And my daughter goes, are you sure this is safe? Okay, so I worked in an amusement park for 14 years as a ride mechanic. Do you think I would go on something that wasn't safe? Do you think I would bring my kids on something that wasn't safe? It's like, no, that's not the case. If I'm going on it, it's fine. You're fine to get on it. It's perfectly safe. Don't worry about it. But that is not the front that I want to put out there. So I tell her, of course, like any good parent would no well it's not safe and she says what and i'm like look around i mean like it's horrible don't you see like arms and legs sticking out of the ground like someone's playing a human game of lawn darts with people like there's just people which just keep falling off the ride one after the other no it's not i'm like oh that's funny. <laughs> that was funny though wasn't it Come on, human lawn darts and there's arms and legs sticking up out of the ground. Nothing but torsos laying all over the place. That's funny. But now she's feeling uneasy about it at the same time. So we go on the ride and we move along to some other stuff. We head towards the back of the park. Uh, or no, we we headed just alongside the monster. There was this old white wooden roller coaster called a tornado. And the funny part about this is now she's feeling uneasy. She's not feeling the safest about this now. And I am kind of leaning into that. As we get on the tornado, we start going around there and it's an older train ride. And as it's going along and I'm like, can you feel like the wooden coach that we're in? Can you feel it shifting as we're going around these bumps? I'm like, do you feel it kind of moving? And she's kind of like, yeah, I do. I'm like, it's not supposed to do that. Like, you had to hold on to this thing as we're going, because I'm not sure. But it's like, <laughs> again, just feeding into that fear. It's funny. And then, uh, so we got done with that, but she was done, not just from me making these cracks and stuff like that, but I mean, it was a hot, miserable day. We were just kind of done walking around the hot park at that point, and we did some, we had done other rides too. So we hit one more ride, which is the Phoenix out there, which we normally have like, it's always like a 20 minute wait to get on that ride, but it was pretty much walk on. In fact, we walked up and we were like, oh, like two more coaches and we'll be on, this will be nothing. And then they like needed to balance one coach out. So like, oh, it was a party of two. It was just my son and I. So we were like, yeah, two, we got up, went on. We tried yelling to my daughter while we were on the lift hill. She was off and we we're like, we're here, we're here. You know, we're doing the normal stuff like that. But anyways up and over after the tornado i got off and i went down i took my favorite picture that i always do with this ride is i go down on the exit there and on one of the bents there is a nut from something sitting up there looks like it's from the train could be from the track i don't know but i always go by this one nut and i take a picture of it and i point to it i'm like eh, there it is so done that a handful of times so far so we leave adventureland and on the way home 
on the way home, we're getting close. Like, okay, we need to get some dinner. And we could probably use to, yeah. No, we need to get some dinner. So we stopped in a town. And when we got off that particular exit, there was a carnival ride sitting there. Looks like it was in the middle of being transported, but they were just parked off the exit. This thing had like, it was a spinning ride that had bears for tubs. And it just looked really interesting as we passed by. So we were like, that was an interesting thing. I'm glad we got off this exit because we were able to see that. That was really cool. So as we got closer into town, we came across something else that was even more interesting. This was, I don't know why or how, but for some reason there is a Pillsbury Doughboy that was nailed to the side of a large pole on the side of the road. No clue as to why, but we're just going by. We're like, is that a Pillsbury Doughboy? And as on the way back, yep. And I took a picture of it <laughs> just in the middle of nowhere. You're coming up along. There's just a bunch of houses and then suddenly you come up to the Pillsbury Doughboy on this pole for some reason. It's like, Okay, now we're going to flash forward just a couple days to now we wanted to go to, now we're going to go to a water park that was close to us. This is the uh, Funplex. Now, when I had said that I worked at an amusement park for 14 years and then had to move to Omaha, Nebraska, the first question people ask me is, what are you going to do out here in Omaha, Nebraska? And then they go, are you going to work for the Funplex? Now... The answer was no, because I found a different job. But the Funplex is a little tiny water slash amusement park that's sitting there. So I'd honestly never been to Funplex before, but we got there before they opened. And there was a pretty good line sitting out in front. And I kind of taken into views. It's like, okay, what's going on here? Uh, kind of noting a bunch of damage all over the place. Just before that, we had gotten in a really strong windstorm uh, that just broke all sorts of trees everywhere so i was looking at some of the broken fencing and some trees that were still down in the meantime uh, but look around they had two go-kart tracks and some flat rides and things like that uh, which was really nothing too much to report for this park uh, we went around i got some interesting videos or i got some videos of some of those smaller rides working we uh, camped out next to the wave pool there and watched the wave pool turn on and off looks like a, just an air pressure driven ballast type pool where just the air pushes the water down on the end to get the wave out of the other end then of course we did like anybody would at any particular water park we went and found the bar which is always the most important thing go find the bar went around found a little zamprilla what is that it's a zamprilla mini jet i think it was a mini jet six you find those rides all over the all over the place uh they had a nice little uh Ferris wheel style ride, the Zamperla balloons ride. Spent the rest of the day there and then uh, came home. So that was pretty much it. So yeah, in the handful, in the in the distance, in the space of about a week, I'd gone to Colorado, the Elitch Gardens, come back home, gone to Adventureland, and then a couple days later, went to the water park that I'd never been to. That's also an amusement park, but I kind of say it's more of a water park at that point uh, but we had a good time and I never done the trip update for it as I said it's been a while it's that happened at the end of July and now here it is pretty much the end of August before I'm finally getting it out but I really didn't have a good idea a good way to get this out because I wanted to do it in a specific style and I kind of felt like the more I tried to latch on to that original idea, the further out this video got. And I just like, I just need to get this done. So I went ahead and did it. Anyways, I hope you guys had fun uh, listening to my three park trip report. I know the third one wasn't much, but not my usual video. Sorry about that. But I did think it was fun. So make sure you like and subscribe. Do all that stuff down there. If you want to contact me. You can email me at ryantherideMechanic at yahoo.com. You can always leave a comment down there. I, I try to get through all of them. No promises on if I can or can't, but uh, I try to read through everything when possible. And the last thing, of course, is to stay off the air gates. Bye.
that was odd. 